In this video, we are continuing to look at the data which was presented at the 2021 European Hematology Association virtual conference. And this time, we are focusing on the data presented for the treatment of sickle cell disease. And we are comparing the two companies, CRISPR Therapeutics as well as Bluebird Bio, and take a look at their clinical data. In case you have missed my video comparing the clinical data about beta thalassemia treatments from these two companies, I leave a link here as well as in the description below. Although I have a PhD in biomedical engineering and over 15 years of working experience in the healthcare industry, I do not intend to give you investment advice. Please consider your own risk profile before making any investments and research your investments wisely. In their June 11 press release, CRISPR Therapeutics talked proudly about the results they have obtained on the treatment of sickle cell disease with their CTX001 compound. CTX001 is a CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing treatment that is alleviating the symptoms of sickle cell disease through the activation of fetal hemoglobin production in patients treated with this compound. Due to a genetic error, Patients with sickle cell disease do not form the correct shape of hemoglobin and therefore their red blood cells have a sickle shape. Due to the sickle shape, red blood cells are not as pliable or flexible as normal red blood cells would be and therefore tend to clog blood vessels which leads to vaso-occlusive crises which can be extremely painful and also damage tissues due to a lack of oxygen. So it is indeed great news that all seven patients who have been treated with CRISPR therapeutics CTX001 remain free of vaso-occlusive crises. And the long-lasting effects of the treatment seem to be demonstrated by at least two patients who have been treated more than a year ago and still show a stable response to the treatment. Therefore, CRISPR therapeutics emphasize that the growing body of evidence seemed to suggest that this CTX001 treatment could be really a one-time functional cure for sickle cell disease and beta thalassemia. And based on these promising and encouraging results, CRISPR therapeutics are working with urgency to complete enrollment in their clinical studies, and they look forward to finalizing the regulatory discussions to move towards filing that is, the approval and ultimately commercialization of CTX001 as soon as possible. Remaining on the topic of press releases, Bluebird Bio's press release is only talking about beta thalassemia, although they also presented data about their clinical trials in sickle cell disease at the European Hematology Conference. Yet, strangely enough, the press release does not mention any updates or results from their sickle cell disease treatment, Although in my previous video, there was certainly some information that was very interesting and shared in the press release about the beta thalassemia data. Why they don't mention anything about the sickle cell disease data is anyone's guess. All right though, let's get back to the science. CRISPR Therapeutics have presented a very interesting poster at the European Hematology Conference. This time I'll skip over the introduction of the poster because the information is pretty much the same as I had covered already in the previous video discussing beta thalassemia. With this poster, CRISPR Therapeutics are providing the study details from seven patients in the phase 1-2 clinical phase who have more than three months of follow-up after the dosing with CTX001. As a result of the treatment with CTX001, Patients showed a clinically meaningful increase in total hemoglobin and also fetal hemoglobin, which occurred early and was maintained over time. The safety profile of the treatment with CTX001 is in line with myeloablative conditioning, and patients were free of vaso-occlusive crisis after the treatment. In their phase 1-2 clinical study, so far seven patients have been enrolled, and they are on average 22 years old and had on average 5.5 vaso-occlusive crises per year. The clinical follow-up post-treatment was between 4.9 to 22.4 months, and that means on average 7.6. 
We'll look at neutrophil engraftment and platelet engraftment a little bit later when we compare that data with Bluebird BIOS information. The safety profile of CTX001 is consistent with myeloablation and autologous hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. And the good news is that there were no serious adverse events linked to CTX001. This graph shows the mean hemoglobin fraction at baseline before the treatment, where we can see that a large portion of the hemoglobin fraction is made up of the sickled uh, shape of hemoglobin. And then after the infusion of CTX001, the composition of blood tends to look very differently. We notice an increase in the fraction of fetal hemoglobin and also an overall increase in total hemoglobin count. Although sickled hemoglobin remains, already after two months, the fraction of fetal hemoglobin is as high as 27%, and this is largely sufficient to avoid vasoocclusive uh, crises. In this graph, we can see that all seven patients who were treated by CRISPR therapeutics no longer have vasoocclusive crises. The first patient is now 22.4 months out or after the infusion of the medication and has had previously seven uh, vasoocclusive crises prior to treatment and has now none. Also, other patients had 7.5, 9.5 uh, crises prior to treatment and now have no longer any vasoocclusive crises. That certainly is very promising and encouraging clinical data. Also, Bluebird Bio presented interesting clinical data at the European Hematology Association virtual meeting. They presented the study updates from the HGB 206 Group C study, where patients were treated with lentiglobin gene therapy for sickle cell disease. The data they present is actually from 32 patients who were treated with lentiglobin and followed for, on average, 13 months, actual duration 1.1 to roughly 31 months after treatment. And as both companies provide insights into the duration for neutrophil and platelet engraftment, we can make the following comparison shown here. And we see that Betty cell Bluebird BIOS treatment seems to be slightly faster in terms of neutrophil and platelet engraftment in comparison to CRISPR therapeutics CTX001. However, I also note that the platelet engraftment, if you look at the range for Betty cell treatment 18 to 136 days, I'd argue 136 days is quite, quite long, much longer in fact than for the other treatment. Furthermore, Bluebird Bio report that all patients stopped red blood cell transfusions by 90 days post-treatment. It is unclear why some of the patients required red blood cell transfusions, but Bluebird Bio also clearly indicate that all of their patients prior to the treatment had vaso-occlusive events or crises, and post-treatment no longer had these events. And so here, both CRISPR therapeutics as well as Bluebird BIOS clinical treatment results are completely on par. In both cases, the patients no longer had vaso-occlusive events after the treatment. However, few differences remain. Bluebird BIO lists that the pancellular expression of the adult form of hemoglobin was observed after six months post-treatment, and 90% of the red blood cells contained the correct form of beta hemoglobin by 18 months. While keeping in mind that Bluebird BIOS treatment is inducing or correcting for the production of adult form of hemoglobin, and CRISPR therapeutics are inducing fetal hemoglobin for the treatment, nevertheless, the pancellular percentage of uh, fetal hemoglobin is already at above 90% four months after treatment, in comparison to the six plus months that was cited by Bluebird Bio. So let's look at total hemoglobin to wrap up. Bluebird Bio lists that more than six months after the treatment, the home total hemoglobin count was 12, in the range 9.6 to 15 grams per deciliter, predominantly made up, of course, of the adult form of hemoglobin whereas the sickled shape or the sickled form of hemoglobin contribution to the total hemoglobin was as low as 5.6 grams per deciliter with a range of 2.7 to 8.9. So let's see if we can make a comparison to the data with CRISPR therapeutics. 
The bar chart, of course, doesn't list the numerical values, but uh, for the five patients, we see the percentage. And a simple calculation allows them to make a numerical comparison in the following table. Overall, we can note that the total hemoglobin is quite comparable between the two treatments. In terms of the sickled form of hemoglobin, we see that in the case of CRISPR therapeutics, there is roughly 6.7 grams per deciliter, whereas in the Betty cell treatment or after the Betty cell treatment, there remain roughly 6.1 grams per deciliter. I would say these numbers remain quite comparable and uh, on par. In terms of uh, hemoglobin, we now have to distinguish between the adult form of hemoglobin, which is induced by Betty cell, so 5.6, and we'll have to compare that to the fetal form of hemoglobin in the case of CTX001. So we are comparing 5.6 grams for Bluebird Bio versus 6.1 grams per deciliter in the case of CTX001. I can't say if one is clinically superior over the other, but these are the data as I see them. In conclusion, I would say, especially from a patient point of view, of course, the most important result of the treatment is the absence of vaso-occlusive crises or events. This definitely improves the patient uh, quality of life, and this is ultimately what payers and health insurances will pay for. As an investor, you need to be aware that sickle cell disease, just like beta thalassemia is, are rare diseases who are protected or can be protected by the orphan drug status. This means the company that brings first their product through the regulatory pathway to commercialization is able to enjoy seven years of market exclusivity in the US and 10 years of market exclusivity in Europe. So the race is still on. I have made a previous video on exactly that topic. I'll link it here. If you've learned anything new and useful for your investment research, please leave a like and consider subscribing to my channel.